we are going to commence the 115th webinar in Manage Webinars series. It's been more than two years we are continuously doing webinar in all Saturdays. The core objective of this webinar series is to impart knowledge and share effective information with the startup. Webinar series is conducted by National Institute of Agriculture Extension Management called MANAGE, an autonomous institute under the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmer Welfare, an apex body for agriculture extension located at Hyderabad. MANAGE Center for Innovation Agripreneurship is an agribusiness incubation unit operating at MANAGE Hyderabad. It is one of the leading agribusiness incubators across the country. MANAGE CIA is committed and uh, dedicated to converting agribusiness ideas into reality supporting agripreneurs to achieve their agripreneurial goals and to establish and emerge as an independent agri startup. Manage CIA have mentored 503 startup, incubated 336 startups, and supported one of these startups with a grand in eight point. As you are aware, today the topic is role of primary processing in agriculture and startup ecosystem. In this webinar, we will discuss about the opportunity for primary processing for the startup, what the scope, challenges, and the upcoming, upcoming opportunity for aspiring entrepreneurs and emerging startups in the primary processing. So with great pleasure, I welcome all the participants to the 115th webinar series hosted by Manage CIA. By this, we will start our webinar. Now I welcome our first speaker for the day, Mr. Ravindra Reddy, uh, sorry for that, Mr. Uday Popal, Managing Director of Perfura Technology India Private Limited. Mr. Uday Bhopal, Managing Director of Petra Technologies India Private Limited. He is a postgraduate in Advanced Manufacturing Technology from University of South Australia with a Bachelor degree in Production Mechanical Engineering from Anna University India. With his uh, academic background, he has established an emerging company to strengthen the slogan of Make in India. With uh, discussion and expertise areas of research, he realized and demand for GMP in agriculture Food industry, which lead to the start of Pesura Technologies India Private Limited. He established the company company in the year 2014 as a private limited company venture with its operational unit at Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu. So, without any delay, I welcome you, sir. Please, sir. Now the floor is yours. You cannot take it, sir. Okay, sir. Please. Thank you, Alok. Thanks for that. It's it's a very good introduction, and uh, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so, I'm Uday Gopal. Uh, I'm the managing director and the founder of Perfura Technologies. So, today I'm going to talk about the role of primary processing in agriculture and startup ecosystem. So, I believe everyone can see uh, see the slide. If you guys have any issue, just do let me know in between here. Yep. Um, all right. So, All right, so this particular slide is about my introduction. So I'm a mechanical engineer, as uh, Alok told, you know, I have a bachelor's degree from India and then a master's degree from Australia. Um, so I have professional membership with uh, Institute of Engineers Australia and Project Management Institute. And uh, my interest is into research and development of mechanical products. Um, and I have 15 plus years of experience in product development and then eight plus years of experience in business management. And um, until now, I have started like founded three companies. Um, so Perfura, both in India and in Australia, and then uh, Grow Ethnic Foods is another branch of like a sister concern of Perfura, uh, which is predominantly using our machinery and then giving training and then uh, you know buy back products from the uh, from Perfura Technologies customers as well. And about the company, um, so it's a private limited company. We uh, work on post-harvest agriculture processing machineries only. And that too, we are working only in millets, pulses, and groundnuts. So the company was incorporated in 2014. It is an ISO 9001 certified company. And uh, we have been awarded as a best millet machinery fabricator uh, by Indian Institute of Millet Research, which is in Hyderabad. Um, and we provide Pan India support, sales and support service uh, through a dedicated customer support team. And we have our offices, uh, the factory is in Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu, and we have sales and support office both in uh, Coimbatore and in um, Hyderabad. Um, and the company is uh, uh, having membership with association like Coimbatore District Small Industries Association, which is called Codicia, and then uh, AMA, which is Agriculture Machinery Manufacturers Association. All right. So when we talk about primary processing of grains, um, so there are certain processes which has to be done for each and every grain. So irrespective of what grain it is, this process has to be done. So when we have the grain um, harvested, that grain has to be threshed first. So so that you know you can see a lady in the photo who is threshing it manually. 
Um, so that's called threshing. And then it has to be picked. Like after threshing, we will be having impurities like, you know, small sticks, uh, sand particles, stones, and other foreign material or uh, different grain, which is mixed in it as well. Uh, so all those has to be pre-cleaned and separated. And then the grain has to be prepared for um, skin removing process. Basically, skin removing people think that skin removing is literally, you know, you just put it into your machine, the skin will be removed. But it's not the case. The skin has, like, the grain has to be prepared so that the skin is um, very detachable, um, very easily detachable from the grain when it is processed. So there are some, some processes like, you know, oil mixing and softening. Um, so, for example, if you take pulses, uh, uh predominantly all the pulses will be mixed in oil and then you know it will be uh, sprinkled with some sort of uh, some amount of water and then it will be sun dried or dried using a dryer um so that that's when the skin is very loose for the next day to be processed um and then the main process is dehusking which is removing the skin dehusking or dehulling based on what drain it is um and then uh, you got postal rice separation um which is after dehusking uh, the broken has to be separated from the whole rice rice or you know um rice in the sense you know if you talk about millets versus the um the consumable pro portion of the grain is what i'm trying to say here and then finally you need to grade or sort the grain based on the size weight and color um and then the um ultimate process is you know packing the grains uh, pack packing the grains so predominantly i'm just covering only primary processing i'm not going into secondary processing and uh, when we talk about what products it is available in Perfura for primary processing, it is actually uh, we have machineries for millet processing, dal processing, groundnut processing, and then you know a bit of value addition, which is power processing as well. So all right, so here I have given an example of a complete set of machineries for millet processing unit. And I have a slide each for dal, groundnut, and flour processing machineries as well at the end of my presentation. Uh, so when we talk about millet processing, the pre-cleaner machine, we call it as a destoner, come grader, come aspirator. And uh, we have a millet D husker and then a millet D huller. Uh, and we have, based on the grain, we have three different types of D hullers, which we recommend to the customers. And then as a postal rice separator, we got again a destoner, come grader, come aspirator, which is fine-tuned to suit the purpose of, you know, postal rice separation. And then we got a millet sorter, which is a color sorter. And then, you know, if you want to make the millet uh, uh, grain or rice, millet rice into a rava, we got a millet rava maker come grader. So this is the first machinery in the process. So uh, we have two two different types of this machinery, uh, which is a destoner come grader come aspirator. And the two types, we call it as a smaller grains destoner and then a bigger grains destoner come grader come aspirator. So whenever we say smaller grains, we talk about grains which is smaller than rice. So predominantly all the uh, millets is um, smaller than rice. And then uh, anything which is rice or bigger than rice, like pulses and groundnuts, uh, all those will be in a different machinery, which I can, which I will be showing in the processing unit. So this machinery has three different setups. Um, an aspirator at the top where you put the material and the lightweight impurities like uh, dust and um, you know, whatever a small leaf can be sucked through this uh, particular aspirator. And then it comes on, comes on to the destoner where the grain will be actually destoned, uh, which means that, you know, the stone will be removed from the grain. It works in a principle called specific gravity, uh, gravity separation, where, you know, the heavier material will be moving to the back and the lighter material will be moving to the front. So based on the size of the grain, size and weight of the grain, um, the machinery has to be set up in a way that, you know, which one goes back and which one comes front. So whenever we talk about grains or stones mixed with the grains, uh, the stones are a little bit heavier than the grains, so it is very easy for us to separate the stones in this process. And then the grain falls onto the grader, where actually size-based grading happens. So we will be having a sieve in the machinery, so that sieve can be suited for the grain. Um, in, the, in this grader, we have two uh, sieves, so basically we get three different outputs. So the front outlet is the main outlet where we get the uh, grain which has to be moved into the further process whereas the other two output will be the ones which is bigger than the grain size for, uh, basically you know if you have any um, say for example a dal is milk, uh, make, mixed into a millet then that can be separated in this one as well and then anything smaller than that uh, which is a, you know sand particles or small sand crystals which can be separated in the grader as well so the output of this machinery will be a cleaned grain which can be used for further process 
This machinery we have in three different capacities. Uh, the machine which shown here is 500 kg per hour capacity, and we also have, uh, sorry, we have four different capacities. Um, so 500 kg is shown here, and we have 110, 210, and 310 capacity machineries. So all these capacity is per hour, and some of the technical specification is shown here. Um, and uh, this half ton capacity machinery, 500 kg capacity machinery runs on two models, which is like two HP and one HP motor. Uh, which is attached to this machine, and this machinery is made, made up of uh, mild steel. The second machinery in the process uh, for millet is uh, millet D husker. So millets, uh, when we talk about millets, we got like uh, two main different types of millets, which is major millet and minor millet. So major millet, uh, this machinery is used as a D husker for major millet. Um, so major millet like finger millet, pearl millet, and uh, sorghum, uh, we just use this machinery as D husker, which will remove the skin. And then for D hulling, uh, for preparing for D hulling, uh, as I told earlier, softening. Uh, so this machinery is used for us used as a softener for kodo, proso, barnyard, and round top millet. So all these four millets comes under the category of minor millets, which has a hard hull in it. Um, so if you take, for example, Kodo millet has, the people say, you know, Kodo millet has like seven layers of skin. So, um, you know, all the minor millets has to be processed in the D hulla, which is the next machine, which I'm going to show. So before processing in that, we are just putting in this D husker and then, you know, we are softening the grain so that it is very, very easy for the grain to be D in the data stage. So this particular machine is again made up of mild steel and it comes in a capacity of 350 kg per hour. And, um, you know, it runs on a 15 HP electric motor. All right. So the third um, in dehala, this is another type of dehala which is used for minor millets. So the next two dehalas which I'm showing is the dehalas which is used for minor millets. So whenever I talk about minor millets, I, I uh, talk about, you know, little Kodo, Proso, Bonyard, Foxtail and Brown Top millets. So um, this machinery was designed by uh, Central Institute of Agriculture and Engineering, which is in Bhopal. Um, so we initially got a license uh, for manufacturing this machinery. And uh, this machinery, again, is used for uh, all minor millets. And uh, it runs in a principle called abrasive uh, type dehulling, which means that there are a couple of uh, abrasive stones in the machine between which the stone with the dehulling happens. And this is a very uh, compact, small model, which is very compact and can be used in, you know, tribal villages or hill stations. And uh, it can, it uh, needs only one HP electric motor, which means that, you know, uh, the power consumption is very, very less. And uh, it can be suited for um, a single phase application. So uh, all, all of our commercial scale machinery requires three phase electricity. Whereas, you know, if you are going to, you know, tribal village or, you know, hill stations there, they will not be having three phase power. So a machinery like this will be suitable for that application, which can be run on single phase power. Uh, all right. The next type of uh, dehala uh, is a single stage centrifugal dehala. So this particular uh, dehala works on a principle called centrif centrifugal dehaling, which is, you know, the grain will be given a centrifugal force and the grain will go and hit a hard surface during which the skin will open. So by doing which the brand layer of the skin retains, so we get an unpolished millet rice. So which is very important, you know, people are moving from uh, paddy rice to millet because they want to be, uh, they want to stay healthy um, and then eat a good food. And then if you just again polish the millet, if you eat the polished polished to millet, we are not going to attain uh, all the nutritional value which is there in the grain. So it is very, very important that we need to ensure that, you know, uh, uh, we are consuming a millet, which is an unpolished millet. And this machinery is one machinery which can make unpolished millet. And um, since uh, it's a single stage dehala, we recommend this machinery for little and foxel. Uh, out of all the minor millets, little and foxel millet are the millets, which is very easy to dehal. And um, so a single stage dehala should be uh, self-sufficient for this application. And this machinery runs on three HP motor. Since it's three HP, we can use both single phase and three phase uh, motors in this. So it can be used in single phase application as well. And again, it is a very compact model uh, compared to the next machinery, which I'm going to show. And lastly, this machinery is made in mild steel as well. All right, this is the, um, the most sold uh, dehaler for us. So it's called a double stage centrifugal dehaler which has two uh, two chambers. Um, the dehulling happens in the first chamber and then the grain falls into the second chamber while 
where the dehealing uh, happens again so that you know you have a um, chance of you know getting it dehealed twice um, again it's a centrifugal type dehealing which is used for all the minor millets uh, and it has a capacity of 300 kg per hour um, and um, as i said you know uh, again this is an unpolished output um, this machinery runs on uh, 7.5 HP electric motor, and again, it is made up of mild steel as well. Uh, um, all right, so after dehulling or dehusking, you will be having some some amount of broken in the grain, and there will be some husk mis mixed with the grain uh, with the rice as well, the final rice as well. So before packing, you just need to ensure that you are separating that whole rice from the broken rice, or the husk has to be separated from the uh, whole rice as well, um, and the Quality of our product is based on uh, when I when I say our product, it's the quality of the product which we are packing uh, is based on um, you know how good we are separating the whole rice from the broken ones. So we don't want to see any broken rice or any husk in the final uh, product which we are packing. Um, so this particular machine does that. Uh, so it's again looks uh, looks like a dish toner. It is a dish toner, but then we just change and fine tune this machinery to do this particular purpose. Um, so here we are just getting the uh, whole rice at the back, and then the broken ones are different. So since broken is less than five percent, literally there will be very less amount of uh, grains coming at the front. So most of the output will be coming at the back, uh, where we will collect the uh, rice and we will pack it further, or we will take it to color sorting as well. So this machinery has a capacity of one ton per hour, and it runs on five HP and um, point five HP electric motor. So this is a color sorter uh, so there are different technologies for sorting so weight based sorting is one and color based sorting is another one um, and then the third one is size based sorting so all of our previous machinery will be doing size based and weight based uh, weight based uh, sorting um, but a color based sorting has to be done using this machinery only um, so um, it will just ensure that we will we can uh, input the uh, acceptable colors and then it will just ensure that all the color, all the grains which is in that particular color band will be allowed uh, in the final output and then whichever is not will be separated from the um, from the plot so say for example if you are having an unheld uh, grain in this stage it will just it will be in a different color because the skin will be in different color it, it is very easy for us to separate that particular grain in this uh, particular uh, machinery um, so Again, uh, the cost of uh, if we sell like 100 miller processing unit, there'll be only up to like five to 10 uh, units which will be having this color sorter because the cost of investment is a little bit higher uh, for this machinery. Uh, and we need to, in, in addition to this machinery, we need to have um, air compressor and then, you know, air filters and uh, air dryers and things like that, which is connected to this. Uh, to the uh, input of this machinery. So uh, the cost of investment is a little bit higher, but still, you know, out of uh, 100 purchases, people are going for color sort of 10 of the people are going for color sort of. Uh, so again, the capacity of this machinery is 100 kg per hour and um, it runs on 5 HP electric motor. Right. Uh, so if you if you guys are making uh, Miller Trava uh, or uh, this machinery can be used for dal splitting as well. Um, so this machinery runs uh, has a two two plate. One is a stationary plate, and another one is a rotating plate. And the grain will be made uh, to pass in between these two plates. And uh, the gap between the plate ensures that you know uh, how good the grain has to be broken down. So basically, if you are looking for something like an upma rava, the grain size will be a little bit, uh, bigger. Whereas if it is an itli rava, it has to be very fine. So the gap will be very very minimal in between these two plates. Um, and uh, this machinery uh, is used for commercial production. Pretty much all of our machinery is used for commercial production. And uh, this machinery runs on 3 HP electric motor, um, and it has a capacity of 300 kg per hour. All right. So as a as a company, um, as a company, I will just let you know. Uh, if you just imagine um, us as a startup. Uh, we started the company in 2014. So in the last eight years, what we have done in the, uh, you know, in the uh, millet processing industry sector or you know, dry, dry land grain processing sector, like, you know, pulses and groundnut, uh, we have just, um, so this particular slide is uh, more about millet uh, based machinery sales. So we have supplied like 200 plus uh, millet dehullers and huskers uh, to the beneficiaries. And uh, around 1,000 plus customers uh, are using our machineries right now. 
And then around 2,500 farmers are actually benefited through these missionaries uh, because a lot of FPOs has purchased these missionaries and a lot of our customers are actually uh, putting up the plant and they're just opening up to the local farmers to come and process in their missionary and they will be doing it uh, using, you know, per kg based um, charging. And um, we have supported like 100 per startup until now uh, who has set up a uh, you know, miller processing plant across various Indian states. And some of the uh, pharma producer companies and startups are shown in the right hand side in the table. Uh, so how do we engage as a business is uh, we just understand the requirement of an FPO or a farmer or a processing industry uh, entrepreneur. And then we will provide a detailed project report to them uh, about their business model of you know how they are going to integrate so we, we will just try and understand what they wanted to achieve out of the unit and we will just recommend the total thing and then uh, we will recommend the machineries which is suitable for that particular uh, unit and then we will also provide a detailed machinery layout which will say what machinery has to be um, installed and at what spacing it has to be and how much space it has to be um, like we need to have for uh, storing the raw material and the final product. So based on that, they can plan their, you know, um, the processing facilities uh, layout or the facility by itself. And after that, we will just ensure we sell, the, after we sell the machinery, we will just ensure that we will provide after sales support. And then a scheduled maintenance um, is given. So we do like uh, two warranty visit in the first year of warranty period. And then, you know, after that, we will be encouraging the customers to take an annual maintenance contract and then finally to startups we will just ensure that we will just um, buy back the product as well from them uh, buy back the finished product as well from them so if they are crossing the grain and we are just buying the product back through our assistance and grow with foods as well so that's something which we can support so this is our team size um, so myself team uh, managing director uh, my father is associated with the business as well and um, we have engineers and executives who are looking after different uh, aspects of the uh, you know the business by itself and we have more than uh, 10 plus uh, technicians and you know the drivers who is associated with the business um so uh during i will just quickly go through this one so after covid we have just made sure that we are just moving into more of online platform with engaging the customers so if there is another lockdown or anything like that in future we are not uh depending on um you know just a physical presence of our technician to go in there we will just have a lot of materials which will just ensure or educate the customers on uh, how to fix the machinery by themselves or if they are they are stuck up with you know setting up the machinery or things like that we have we have supports which is available remotely as well. So again, as I told, uh, so the missionary which missionary list of missionaries which we have seen is for millets, and similar kind of missionaries is for dal. So here uh, it's again a pre cleaner for uh, pulses, uh, and then as I said, this is the oil mixer uh, where all the pulses has to be mixed with oil and then uh, dried using a dryer or it has to be sun dried in a field. And then it has to be processed in a dal dehusker, and then we've got a greater capacitor where we can uh, separate the broken and the um, so it's it's actually postal separation of uh, pulses. So this is a very basic unit, and we also supply units with the dryer and then elevator system, which can automate the full process. And uh, uh, groundnut in groundnut, you know, we have uh, destoners for removing the uh, stones from the groundnut, and then we got decal decator, which will remove the shell of the groundnut and give the full groundnut. And then we have roasters, which is not shown in this photo, which will be th uh, there in the next uh, slide, um, which uh, can roast the groundnut, and then you can remove the skin of the groundnut. So the last machine on the right hand side uh, will give a uh, groundnut, which is skin removed and splitted um, so that it can be used for chicky processing as well. So that's called groundnut de-skinner. And then floor processing unit, uh, we got a roaster uh, pulverizer. So roaster is, as I told, you know, roasting of multi, like all the um, uh, commodities, like, you know, all the grains and flour as well. And then pulverizer, we got from 20 kg capacity to all the way up to 600 kg capacity, which is a flour making machine. So you put the grain in it and you will get a flour. So we have double stage and single stage in this one as well. So a grain which is easy to grain can be used in double stage pulverizer, whereas if it is a hard grain like wheat or, you know, chili, something like that, it has to be processed in a double stage pulverizer. We got flour sifter, which can sieve the flour uh, so that you get a uh, perfect, you know, you can say that your product is um, under certain micron range and then you got the blender as well. Yeah. Um, 
this is it and these are the contact of our team members uh, who is looking after various business development activity in different states thanks very much for that thank you a lot yes uh, thank you uh, uday sir for this uh, beautiful uh, presentation uh, we can see that a lot of uh, products that have been uh, developed in the area of uh, primary processing and i also understand that you have presence in uh, other international markets also so uh, it's a wonderful uh, presentation by you the machines are really good so you have taken from uh, the first stage to the last stage of primary processing you have uh, most of the uh, devices uh, machineries with you so that's a, a good thing so next uh, we will have uh, our second speaker uh, mr manjunath but so mr manjunath but he is a founder and a ceo of uh, vitaminet reenergize uh, llp based out in uh, sirsi karnataka so mr manjunath but is a sanskrit vidwa ma and also a farmer with a prior experience in uh, sales so he is a passionate entrepreneur who hails from uh, sitsi karnataka uh, and he is currently involved in uh, uh, manufacturing of chemical free nutri supplement uh, products that are based out uh, means uh, manufactured based out from this uh, vegetable so they uh, the process of uh, primary processing that is involved in manufacturing these products is going to expand in his uh, today's session and he has also created uh, employment opportunities for uh, rural youth and women in uh, sitsi uh, karnataka so uh, he has uh, developed the product which is having uh, very good demand in uh, urban areas where people are suffering from uh, lifestyle uh, diseases so on behalf of manage cia i welcome uh, manjunath uh, but uh, sir, you can uh, start your presentation. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Prem, sir. Uh, can you hear me? Hi, sir. We can hear you. You can continue, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Prem, sir, uh, giving the, this opportunity for uh, here. Uh, my sir, my Manjunath Bhatt from uh, Sirsi, Uttar Kannada, the Western Ghat city in Karnataka, at a very small town. And uh, actually, I studied in Sanskrit, uh, Mysore, and Bangalore. After I work in uh, Bangalore and uh, Chennai, uh, USA, Boston area. After I came back, I started my own uh, uh, planning to start my new venture. Uh, this is my new venture. Uh, uh, you are manufacturing nutrient supplement. Actually, uh, vegetables and greens, we have dehydrated and poured and after mixing, after selling. This is the, our uh, team. Uh, Pravin, sir, next. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Sir, move to next. Sir, is it visible for you? Uh, no, sir. Ah, no, slide, slide number. Yeah, yeah, continue. Ah, uh, this is our two products. Uh, one of the Diavita and the Vita Peak. Uh, am kya uh, Can I speak Hindi also? It's good. Yes, yeah, sir, you can. Yeah, uh, I'm basically uh, uh, farmers, uh, farmers, logon se vegetables and greens lete hain and after the uh, greens and <clears throat> vegetable ko lene ke baad usko washing agera karke hum usko dry karte hai dehydrated machine se D dry ke baad hum usko uh, convert to powder after mix karte hai uh, hum do product abhi launch kiye hain ek diavita naam ka Diabetes is the basically karela based hai and uh, banana based, uh, dry green banana based and karela based product hai. Again, ovita fit hai. Uh, these are our vegetable cutting machines, uh, food dehydrated machines, and powdering machine. Next, sir. Uh, Diabetes is helps to stabilize uh, glucose level and this is the diabetic patients only. And diabetes patients uh, nutrient supplement. This is main. Next, sir. This Vita Pit. Uh, this product is all of uh, sub people ko hum karte hain. Mainly uh, children's 
not eating vegetables and greens at that time they use this powder and only drink it all vegetables and greens are that next yeah saurabh please load the video yes i will is our processing video Uh, this is our uh, processing video, the small video. Uh, अभी मार्केट क्या है इकोसिस्टम uh, में मैं बताता हूँ बेसिकली uh, हम एक साल के पहले ये स्टार्ट किया uh, दो साल हो गया स्टार्ट uh, करके uh, दो प्रोडक्ट स्टार्ट हुआ स्टार्ट um, होने के बाद ये डिहाइड्रेटेड फूड एंड डिहाइड्रेटेड वेजिटेबल्स मार्केट इज बिग एंड यू गो टू द साउथ अमेरिका या अदर कंट्रीज ऑल्सो उस उधर भी चलता है बट इंडिया में डिहाइड्रेटेड मार्केट वेरी छोटा है पीपल uh, को कोई भी uh, सब्जी लेता है बट डिहाइड्रेटेड uh, सब्जी कोई भी नहीं लेता है इसलिए हम प्लानिंग किया वो हम डिहाइड्रेटेड कर रहे हैं और सब्जी भी हम ले रहे हैं और डिहाइड्रेट कर रहे हैं नेक्स्ट स्टेप क्या है हम नेक्स्ट स्टेप में क्या किया और प्रोडक्शन को ज़्यादा किया और छोटा छोटा मॉल फार्मर्स आर ग्रोथिंग वेजिटेबल्स एंड ग्रीन्स एंड उसको हम डायरेक्टली बात किया उसके साथ हम वेजिटेबल्स एंड ग्रीन्स को लिया बाद में हम डेटेड वेजिटेबल्स एंड ग्रीन्स को किया बट मार्केट किधर मार्केट है ऐसा एक बड़ा सवाल हमको सामने आ गया बाद में हम इसका एक प्रोडक्ट बनाएंगे ऐसा सोचा और वो प्रोडक्ट होना चाहिए तो हेल्थ चाहिए उसके साथ और इजी टू उसको लेने का है लोग क्योंकि मिनट में अभी कैसा चल रहा है लाइफस्टाइल मिनट में क्या मिलेगा फूड वो खाएगा ऐसा होता है इसलिए हम सोचा वो मिनट में रेडी होने का है फूड उसके बाद हम इसको मार्केट कर सकते हैं ऐसे सोच के हम पहले इस फूड को डेवलपमेंट किया एक 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 साल को हम डेवलपमेंट के लिए हम सोचा और एक बार एक बार मिक्सिंग किया बहुत बार मिक्सिंग किया और डेवलपमेंट किया एक एक वेजिटेबल डाला और निकाला प्रोडक्ट से ऐसा हुआ बाद में एक दो प्रोडक्ट हम बना दिया और प्रोडक्ट को बनाने के बाद हमको सवाल उठा मार्केट किधर करेंगे ऐसा सवाल एवरी स्टार्टअप को पहले से स्टार्ट होता है और मार्केटिंग के लिए किधर किधर जगह है वो हम सोचने लगा और या हम ऑनलाइन में मार्केटिंग स्टार्ट किया फेसबुक एंड फेसबुक ग्रुप्स एंड व्हाट्सएप व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप ऐसा प्लेस में स्लोली स्लोली मार्केट पिकअप होने के स्टार्ट किया और प्रोडक्ट एक बार सेल हुआ ओके वो हम कर सकते हैं हमारा कैपेसिटी से एक बार हम सेल कर सकते हैं बाद में क्या होता है वो दूसरे टाइप 
हमारा प्रोडक्ट्स उपयोग होने के बाद वो लेने का है नेक्स्ट टाइम ऐसा हमने सोचने किया और उसी समय से हम वो प्लानिंग किया हमको वो पहले कौन लिया था कस्टमर वो दूसरा अगेन एक महीने के बाद दो महीने के बाद वो लेने को स्टार्ट किया ये हम एक स्टेप को सक्सेस हुआ उस समय बाद में हम मार्केटिंग के लिए डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर लाइन डीलर्स लाइन एंड होलसेल मार्केट सभी पकड़ा और बाद में हम वाइट लेवल में इसको देने को स्टार्ट किया दो तीन कंपनी को हम वाइट लेवल में दिया उधर भी हमारा प्रोडक्ट स्टार्ट हो गया क्योंकि हम इस प्रोडक्ट को तो लिया था वो मिक्सिंग वेजिटेबल्स पाउडर का मार्केट मार्केट में दूसरा प्रोडक्ट नहीं मिल रहा था वो बेसिकली हमको मिलेट्स का प्रोडक्ट मिल रहा था और दूसरा का लोग इसका प्राइस या अलग वो वेजिटेबल हम खाते हैं मिक्सड वेजिटेबल क्यों खाने का पाउडर क्यों खाने का वो ड्रिंक करने का ऐसा क्वेश्चन स्टार्ट किया था बाद में हम न्यूट्रिशनल प्रैक्ट को हम देख दिखाने को स्टार्ट किया और इसमें क्या एनर्जी होता है और प्लांट बेस्ड में प्रोटीन कैसा होता है और प्रोटीन अभी क्या होता है सभी प्रोटीन अंदर होता है प्लांट बेस्ड प्रोटीन खाने के बाद बहुत टाइम तक बॉडी से अंदर नहीं होता है ऐसा वो सभी समझ जाने के बाद हमको ये मार्केटिंग मिला वो मार्केटिंग अभी अभी स्टार्ट हो गया हम अभी कर्नाटका का ऑलमोस्ट एवरी प्लेस हम दे रहे हैं ये सभी हमारा मंजुनाथ uh, <laughs> one of the vishal marathi is the our marketing team and chandrashekar k is a iit engineer and he support to machineries and background and dr satyanand mp is he is the professor and ayurvedic doctor uh, one of the manipal ayurvedic institute of uh, karnataka and this is our contact team uh pravin sir yes sir yes sir ha ah. yes thank you sir uh, thank you Uh, yeah. I, uh, please summarize uh, whatever uh, yes. Manjana sir has yes, yes. Uh, covered so far for yes. the benefit of the audience, sir. Please. Sure, sure, sure. I'll do that, sir. Uh, so um, the participants, sir, kindly note that uh, Mr. Manjunath Abbad, he is uh, involved in uh, production of uh, nutritional uh, supplement, uh, which are uh, developed by. Uh, dehydrating the vegetables and converting them into uh, powder and uh, he is mixing them in uh, uh, right proportion uh, which is his uh, trade uh, secret actually the ratio of mixing of uh, vegetables is uh, the trade secret and they have applied for uh, uh, ipr Precious. for that yes and uh, these products have been already uh, sold in the market and uh, he has uh, got the uh, validation done uh, from uh, relevant uh, agencies and also got licenses fssi license and uh, he has uh, given few samples to uh, uh, doctors where they uh, used it by themselves and also recommended uh, for the patients uh, to use it especially people who are suffering from uh, lifestyle diseases the manipal uh, institute Uh, doctors have suggested it and the patients who have used it they have got uh, very good results since these products doesn't have any uh, artificial colors any harmful uh, preservatives or uh, chemicals used it is safe to uh, use even uh, by um, people like us even children and they have two different products one is specifically for uh, people who are having diabetes for them uh, giving uh, a nutritional uh, supplement is uh, provided by the company and the, in the, one of the slide uh, or the video they clearly told what are the ingredients they have used for these uh, two different products so uh, manjunath but is having a very small uh, production unit very small team he has been supported by his uh, wife his uh, other uh, friends and uh, personally uh, uh, i have uh, tried this product and it's really good and uh, uh, he has uh, 
uh, given um, uh, price, like uh, if you compare uh, with other uh, companies, the products, the raw materials, that is vegetables and greens that he's purchasing from the farmers. So he is giving uh, a few rupees extra compared to any other companies who are buying uh, from the farmers at a wholesale rate. So in this way, he is also creating uh, a better uh, livelihood for the farmers also. And he is also having uh, regular uh, suppliers uh, who uh, provide uh, 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 the quality that he requires on the vegetables at uh, regular uh, intervals. And he purchases it at a, at a better market price from them. So in this way, uh, he is not only uh, supporting uh, uh, rural uh, youths and uh, women by providing jobs in his company, he's also supporting the farmers and encouraging them to uh, uh, grow these vegetables at the quality that he requires. And uh, the products are already available in uh, most of the uh, towns, most of the cities in uh, Karnataka. Uh, and he is also planning to launch the products in e-commerce portal also like Amazon and Flipkart. And uh, he gets regular orders uh, from uh, uh, metro cities uh, in Karnataka and outside Karnataka also. There are many doctors personally that are uh, recommending uh, the product to use. And uh, all the field uh, uh, trials has been done, lab testing has been done. So we will uh, take up a few questions from the participants. So then uh, he may be able to uh, answer directly some of the questions from the participant. And even I have a few questions for both the speakers. Okay. So. Uh, Okay, so the first question is for uh, uh, Uday Gopal, sir. Sir, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Yes, yes. Uh, sir, uh, since uh, you have developed machines that are used in uh, primary processing of uh, grains, so just wanted to know, like, uh, uh, how did you uh, conceptualize this idea? Like, uh, what made you to get into this uh, vertical? All right, so... You know, I did my master's degree in Australia and just came back to India and I wanted to start something in related to mechanical engineering. I wasn't having any idea of starting, you know, agriculture based business. Uh, but then, you know, um, uh, my father had a small business which was uh, doing uh, uh, these toners only. So these, these toners uh, were an improvised model of his. So um, when I was, um, you know, taking that machinery and going to far, like uh, farmers, uh, people were saying that, you know, there are millets, you know, which they wanted to process and uh, there is no machinery for it. That's when I understand that there is a gap in the market that, you know, uh, a, a new product development has to be done in that particular area for millets. And uh, after that, I just um, reached out to a lot of universities um, who are into, you know, product design, uh, the machinery design for, uh, you know, uh, post-harvest processing of grains. And then... Um, I found out that there are some universities that have done some sort of designs and um, we just started with getting a license from that and then we just started selling those missionaries and then worked on customer feedback and things like that. So that's that's how it all started. Okay, good, good. Thank you, sir. Uh, Manjunath, sir. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. sir uh, um... If I'm not wrong, uh, uh, initially you were uh, uh, selling the... Uh, powdered uh, banana, right? Uh, then you yeah. start with these uh, uh, products, Diafit and Vitafit. So uh, can yes. you just uh, tell me the background, like how you uh, started this company? What made you to uh, venture out into this uh, uh, nutri supplement uh, business, sir? Uh, actually, I stay in the US in four, three years. And I came back here and uh, I searching market and the new product. Uh, and after I saw the so many plant-based and chemical-based uh, products in uh, available in market, but the uh, people are no, no, not using in dehydrated product in uh, uh, in India. After uh, I planning to I start some dehydrated foods in uh, 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 in my village, and then uh, export that dehydrated food. But after I thinking license and so many risk in uh, export market, I planning to start here. Uh, dehydrated food, uh, banana dehydrated, dehydration, and uh, some dehydration leaves. And also I started here. Uh, 
after only you uh, started banana powder don't people don't get the only banana powder and the cost is higher than 200 250 per kg uh, 500 grams uh, people are not uh, uh, taking that uh, so much cost in uh, market in olive in uh, uh, millets powder all uh, 40 rupees i is uh, planning to start the plan to start the new product and i started uh, working that product and i started uh, 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 mixing banana karela and uh, black pepper my village also uh, is one of the best market in black peppers and uh, supari and uh, i take black pepper also mm, he only he started that type he started sir Okay, okay, good, sir. Thank you. So we have a few participants who have raised their hands. We'll take questions from them. Uh, we have Mr. Uh, Devadas TP who wants to ask questions to the speakers. Uh, Mr. Devadas, uh, you yeah. can directly ask the questions to the speakers now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the questions is uh, to Perfura, you know, that is, I think I saw you make, uh, you know, roasters and uh, pulverizer and, you know, and uh, blenders and all. Uh, you know, starting from 20 kg, that is what I understood. And uh, uh, can we use this, uh, you know, for, uh, uh, you know, uh, roasting and pulverizing the spices? The same machine, can we use it? Um, yes, sir, definitely we can use it. Uh, so basically, um, we, we have a specific model as well, so which runs on one motor. Uh, so there is one motor and you have two machineries on either side. You can change the belt and put it in one machine so that, you know, you can use the spices machine on one side and then the other one will be a, a floor processing machinery. So that's one thing. Or else you can see the thing is, uh, if you have a machinery, if you process spices in that machinery, you cannot use the same machinery for floor processing because all the spiciness will be there in the uh, machine, even though whatever you clean it. So we highly recommend to have two different separate machineries for uh, spices and uh, floor. Just in case if they're not doing any flour processing, then it's fine. Yeah, the missionaries can definitely process, you know, spices as well. Okay, good. Thank you, sir. I hope uh, Devdas, your question is answered. So we have uh, another participant, uh, Mr. Abdul, who has raised his hand. Yeah, Abdul, you can ask the questions to the speakers. Uh, morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, Manjunath Batre, uh, I, I can't speak uh, Kannada because I'm very near to his village, Sirsi. I'm from Ellapur actually. Yeah, uh, yeah. Better ask questions in English, sir, so that other okay. participants also can understand. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, Manjunath, but uh, I'm from Ellapur. Uh, I'm yeah, also good, manufacturing sir. cashew kernels and uh, processing turmeric. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I want to know more about your products. It's available in Ellapur. Uh, I need for my yeah. mother. Mother, she is suffering from diabetes. So I need your product. Uh, so actually, send me um, my, my email ID, your address. I'll send you the courier by courier, sir. In oh, Ella, okay. okay. uh, available. I got your number. Yeah, yeah. Huh? I got your number. I'll contact you. Okay. Yeah, definitely, yes, sir. Thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, Manjunath, sir. One question for you. Uh, uh, since you have the two different products, uh, is there any specific recipe to use? Like how much quantity a person can consume in a day? And uh, do they need to add anything else along with that, especially for diabetes patients I'm asking for? Yeah, uh, this is a, basically this is the vegetables and greens uh, dehydrated powder. Okay. Uh, and the karela and banana also control uh, diabetic uh, glucose levels in the blood glucose levels. Um, we are uh, only five grams in uh, suggesting taken uh, morning. Uh, morning five grams. Uh, okay, okay, sir. So we have a few more participants who have raised their hands. I'll take uh, Mr. Gopinath. Gopinath, yes, yes, yes. I have a doubt regarding the pulverizer machine. Uh, in uh, Salem, I think they are having that uh, stone machine. 
if you have an option to uh, utilize this stone machine in uh, perfora sir uh, we don't we don't have stone machine we don't uh, promote stone machine because you know uh, there is obviously since it's a stone uh, there yes. is a chance that you know these stones will be getting mixed into the final product and uh, most of our customers are doing exports so where that machinery is anyway not allowed so even though you know uh, you have see yes, this machinery it. when we are processing uh, this machinery and, uh, we, uh, same way they are uh, mentioning like uh, that is uh, uh, means iron also will be crushed in that uh, floor so that's why they are making into stone that like that uh, the controversy is there so i don't know the okay. technical details so you can clarify me which is better yeah we all over uh, all over secondary processing machinery which is like you know floor processing machinery we use okay. stainless steel uh, okay. which is uh, not a mild steel and it will not rust and we yes. use a full grade stainless steel i saw so, your machines in uh, tox uh, hyderabad okay okay so okay. the places in um, uh, some of the areas in millet sub also i saw your uh, machine yeah yeah that's right so that's right so you are from hyderabad is it sir no sir i am from chennai i know uh, about missionaries in coimbatore that's why i am asking i i think he is in uh, salem i think uh, victory machines yeah yeah okay yeah he is uh, giving that uh, stone machines uh, yeah, yeah. I, I want to i need i need this clarification that's why i am asking yeah yeah that's right so that's that's the problem sir so when we when we are doing exports so which means that export has regulation and we yes. internally like when we sell okay. within india we don't have that many regulation or standards uh, okay. right? uh we are allowed to do you know processing using stone machinery but as a company as an iso 9000 company and being an engineer i don't uh, recommend that machinery um okay. and uh, you know all all our machinery all our secondary processing machinery is made up of uh, 304 stainless steel which is a full grade stainless okay. steel it will not rust or uh, there will not be any steel which is coming into the final product as well sure sir sure. okay okay thanks thanks sir thanks sir yes uh, uh, uday kumar sir i have one question for you um uh, this uh, there are many startups who want to get into this uh, uh, agri machinery business especially into uh, primary processing and also what what tips you want to give it to them somebody wants to get into this business sir it's a very good question sir uh, so that's the reason uh, we have started grow with eco as well because there are a lot of customers who buy the machinery but it's not about just buying the machinery okay and we uh, we had seen after 2 years these customers are not in the market and uh, we they just come back to us and ask that you know if there is any customer who can buy our machinery in second hand please let us know you know and we we just wanted to understand the process and we found that in a, uh, you know if you have a good manufacturer who can just provide a good product and provide after sale support it is covered right but you know to survive uh, as a startup to survive in the market machinery is not machinery is yeah, obviously heart of it if you have very good market and very good vendor to supply your product um you, if you don't have very good machinery or the company who can give you pro- proper after sale support then it will be a problem but whereas if you find the right company there is other problems as well like which we need to take into consideration you know um so the product selling the product right so there are two different uh, markets for the product one is wholesale market and then another one is branding your product and selling directly into the um you know the retailers right so that is more profitable and uh, the other one selling it to the wholesalers you don't have any grip they define the price so only thing is you know you just need to sell it in volume and you get like 2 rupees 3 rupees per kg or something you know maximum 5 rupees if you get 5 to 10 rupees it is a very good cost right uh, per kg so that wholesaler market is something different whereas you know um if you want to directly sell into it then the other problem is you need to have an incubator like you know manage or other incubators who can uh, give support or hand holding in you know branding the product and teaching them how to market the product right and then in addition to that at the back end of it you know you need to purchase the grain at the right time so in grow it when we started grow it like we had difficulties like we were selling within coimbatore only right um so yeah we had these two market and we ended up having some orders right we were sell, uh, sell, uh, supplying re- regularly to like 30 40 supermarkets uh, uh, in wholesale and then uh, the branding we haven't started at the time we were doing only wholesale right but we have, we have agreed for a price we were supplying and then the in the volume increase our vendor could in supply the material whatever we wanted so we need to go to another vendor which is costlier right 
and then there are periods when we, we cannot get the grain because you know it's not a harvest period or something like that so we need to allow or we need to have the cash flow to ensure that we can stock up that particular amount of uh, material which is required for next one year and until or until the next harvest period so that's something which is very very important one is the marketing point of it and whether you want to do it in a wholesale market or a you know a retail market where you can brand it and promote your product and then at the back end you need to find the supplier where you can get the material at all the time uh, and you know you need to calculate all the costs so this these are the things which we have found out uh, sir Okay. okay, sir. Sir, uh, once say suppose there are a few startups uh, who have uh, been supported by Manage also, uh, and uh, there are a few startups who have applied for funding with us. So, on behalf of them, uh, I have a question for you. Uh, so, somebody who is into this uh, primary processing machineries, so we ask them to get uh, uh, validation uh, done uh, from a competent authority. For the efficacy of these machines so are there any uh, authorized agencies or uh, institutions that you can uh, tell us so that uh, we can also ask our uh, startups to get in touch with them and get their machines validated all right so the firstly sir I, i'm not sure why uh, you are asking the startups to get the uh, validation performance testing certificate is what I, what you're saying is it Missionary performance. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So because the manufacturers has to have it, sir. If we, if you see us, for example, so we have uh, most of our machinery has a certification from Central Institute of Agriculture Engineering, who does the performance evaluation for each and every grain. So in India right now, that's required for uh, supplying in government tenders, right? Uh, that's a prerequisite, prerequisite. But then you know the cost involved in getting those certificates is in lakhs, basically. Uh, so for each missionary, for each train, you would be looking like somewhere around five to six lakhs is what it is. Uh, so, but, uh, you know, um, the manufacturers will be, will be having it, like not all the manufacturers, but some of the manufacturers are having it right now. So whenever they purchase the missionary, they need to ensure that they, this missionary has a performance testing done already by the, uh, you know, there is only two authority in India who can certify this, uh, approved by government of India. Um, that's a uh, CIFET uh, Institute in Ludhiana and then uh, the testing center in Central Institute of Agriculture and Engineering, which is in Bhopal, and they have a regional center in uh, Coimbatore as well. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. So, uh, we have a few more uh, participants who has raised the hand. Uh, I'll take uh, one last question from the participants here. Uh, Mr. Saurabh Dubey. Uh, Mr. Saurabh, kindly ask the questions to the speakers. Saurabh Dubey, please unmute yourself and ask the yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I'm unmuted. My, my voice is clear. I, ju I just yeah, want to perfect. ask, uh, I just want to, uh, your uh, machinery power consumption. And uh, one more thing is uh, for the turmeric, you are growing or taking from the market? So is the turmeric question to me or to Manjana, sir? To, to you, sir. This for you. Okay. okay okay so uh the power consumption is uh different for different machineries sir if you let me know what uh, are you are you thinking of crossing turmeric is it yes 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 okay so you want to de-stone turmeric and then make turmeric powder is that right sir started uh and the overall power consumption i'm asking Okay, right. So for turmeric, if you see the minimum capacity for de-stoning, uh, the machine which we have is 500 kg per hour. It has two motors, sir, uh, two HP and half HP. So it's two and a half HP power consumption. And then for making turmeric powder, we recommend a machine which is of uh, double stage pulverizer. The minimum capacity of that machine is uh, 100 and uh, 100 kg. There is a machine which is running on 15 HP electric motor. So it's literally you need. Um, uh, a power capable to run uh, 15 plus 2.5 HP, 17.5 HP of uh, electrical power, sir. So this is the minimum capacity. And if you go higher capacity, then the power consumption is more. And then, right, right. Uh, yes, sir. The the ma the market uh, you you take from the terminal from the open market or you are growing. Uh... Yeah, we don't we don't do that, sir. Our customers does it. So if you are processing it, then, then you need to buy the terminal. And then you buy the machinery from us and you install your in your factory and then you process the turmeric. So, uh, but when we see our customers uh, in grow ethnic, we don't do so. So if you're asking about grow ethnic, we don't do turmeric in grow ethnic. 
um so if you see our customers we have given missionaries for turmeric uh, and they, our customers are purchasing from the uh, direct from the farmers and there are some customers who purchase from the mandis you know uh, from the uh, turmeric uh, vendors who stocks and do that yeah right right thank you thank you okay thank you so uh, now we are, have uh, arrived at the end of uh, today's webinar i thank uh, all the participants for uh, attending today's webinar on uh, uh, role of uh, primary processing in agriculture and uh, for startups and also thank uh, both the speakers uh, uday kumar sir and uh, manjunath but for uh, sparing their valuable time to deliver a beautiful session uh, on the topic and uh, i request all the participants to uh, kindly check the chat box we have uh, shared the link to submit the feedback uh, for today's webinar and also link for uh, registering for the upcoming webinar and uh, we have also shared the details of uh, our social media handles you can uh, click on them and you can follow so that you can get updates on the, all the upcoming uh, programs and events organized by mna cia and um, the contact details of both the speakers has been shared so you can uh, contact them if you have any further questions if you need any assistance related to primary processing in your business you can get in touch with them um, we will also be sharing the ppts of both the presentations today for all the registered participants of uh, the webinar on behalf of uh, manage cia i thank uh, once again the participants and uh, both the speakers thank you everyone Thank you. Thanks for that. Thank you, sir. Thank you.